Hi guys, George here, and today what I want to bring to you is a quick Q&A regarding air support. The reason why I'm doing a Q&A is because I figured that um, question and answer is the best format to get a quick overview and get our feet wet uh, with air support. Uh, so we won't end up in a situation like this fellow here. He ended up uh, being wounded, uh, but before he's asking everybody, where's my air support, where's my armor? Not everybody, but his colonel, I suppose. We're all familiar with this fellow. Now, copyrighted material, but you're using it under fair use, just one snippet, not the entire content, and we can all already imagine uh, screaming over the phone, where's my air support? Counterattack! I am counterattacking! You get the picture? I hope you do. And I hope you, by the end of this video, you'll get the picture with respect to air support. Now, I minimized everything because I'd like to show you my the wonderful um, the wonderful uh, player aid from Texas ASL that summarizes uh, air support. Okay, and um, let's get on with the show. So the first uh, question people might ask is, when do I get air support? And uh, according to Echo Seven Point Two. Uh, let's say the current uh, turn is turn three. It's your player turn. Let's flip it to allied and you roll a 1d6. Roll the four. It ain't coming. Let's say it's now the axis turn, uh, turn three and they roll. They roll the two. So the condition is less than the current turn number. The axis get a um, air cover, air support. What am I talking about air cover? Boom. All's fine and dandy. Okay. Now, the rules for Stukas are slightly different, but before we get there, the second question would be is, suppose we now, both players have air support. He is the attacker, he is the defender, and we both have air support. So what could arise is, during the Germans, the German, the attacker's close combat phase, this can happen. Boom. Now we're marked in CC, and guess what? You guessed that CC is not sequential when it comes to dogfighting. So along comes uh, the dogfight. He, he being the attacker, rolls first. Okay. If the attacker rolls four or less, uh, the defender is eliminated without any opportunity to attack the attacker. So let's roll in a close combat roll. What do we get? Eight. Not much has happened here. So if we roll uh, less than or equal to four, the attacker is eliminated. Uh, if we rolled a number equal to five, uh, the target is uh, damaged. If we roll uh, 10 or more, the target has optional uh, recall at the end of the close combat phase. If the original 11 versus uh, uh, a Stuka, then the attacker is hit. And if the original DR equals a 12, there's a MG malfunction. Now, if the original uh, DR uh, is for the color dies a sixth, the and you're attacking a um, a, a Stuka uh, with the an 11 dice roll. That means the attacker is eliminated because he got hit by the rear gunner. Now, there are DRMs for the dogfight resolution, and you can find them either in the rulebook under Echo 7.22 or in this handy guide. Uh, one thing that reflects reality is uh, when you jettison your bombs, you are uh, attacking at a, uh, an advantage with a minus one DRM versus someone that um, that has not jettisoned their bombs. And the other item here that is interesting is there's a plus one DRM when the fire is a Stuka. What does that translate to? I don't know. <laughs> when an aircraft is okay, okay, at what distance does the enemy have to be in order for it to be in range? So basically, Let's say, I know we said that the, the Germans got uh, 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 an airplane, but 
uh, let's pretend for a moment that uh, it's the Soviet player that is uh, attacking. So basically, mostly everyone can see him unless they're behind a blind hex, I suppose. And um, let's see how far uh, this half track is to this fellow. So we count one, two, three, four, five. Doubled is ten, because aerial range is doubled, and that's probably that probably explains why uh, aircraft usually, when they're doing a strafing run, they start their attack at four hex range, which is within the range of their AA gun. Well, I think AA guns have a range of, of 12, so well within range, let's say. Okay, now there is a, a, a chart here, Echo 7.2 or H1.531, where in DYO scenarios you can determine what kind of guns or what kind of um, what kind of um, aircraft and how much aircraft you get with bombs arrive. Now, most of the scenarios that I've played are, um, are provide air support and the type of bombers, the number of bombers, and how many turns they can stay on board by SSR. Uh, scenarios that have been designed early in the evolution of um, in the history of our advanced squad leader may ask players to um, pro, pro, to have uh, bombers and, and the aircraft based on a random DR. But um, more recent um, scenarios kind, kind to stave off uh, random selection in favor of um, aircraft by SSR. So that reduces the complexity a little bit. Okay. So we covered close combat. Before any attacks take place, what you need is to ensure a proper sighting task check. So in this case here, um, I move to a position four hexes away from my target that I am trying to sight. However, if the attacking airplane is a Stuka, on the other hand, they have to start their attack from uh, the adjacent hex. So that's a nice counter from Bounding Fire Productions, uh, recreated in Vassal. And I like the way they've done the uh, number here. The number here represents um, the IFT DRM for any attack against the aircraft. It designates that it's a 43 dive bomber, rear MG, has a 37LL uh, gun with an infantry fire equivalent of eight and a morale of eight. All, if not all, um, uh, air crews have a morale of eight. And the morale of eight is crucial in determining whether you sighted your, your target or not. So let's carry through with this uh, fighter bomber. Uh, and he is trying to sight the, uh, we like leaders, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, put them there. He's trying to sight this target hex here. Okay, and he asked it to target in for the task check for the purpose of the task check. He asked to target um, the most likely visible target in that hex. However, it's very important to note that the target hex cannot be empty of an enemy for the purposes of this task check. So if you go down the DRMs and you have to roll less than eight, eight, uh, eight or less, um, if there was smoke. That would be a positive uh, death roll modifier. If the target was in a building, uh, woods, rubble, or orchard in season, another plus three would ensue. And all these are cumulative. Uh, dashing or moving totally inside a building, trench, pillbox is not applicable. Okay. Plus one target if the target is in brush, grain, marsh, crag, graveyard. I think these babies are concealment terrain. Plus one target is within four hexes of a non-hip uh, non vehicle, which is the case. Uh, plus one mist, dust, heat, haze, regardless of aerial range. Um, I may have forgotten to mention, but uh, this is not meant to be an exhaustive uh, rule um, overview because if, I, if it was, it would be here forever. Planes cannot attack during overcast night or fog. 
So right off the bat, you know you won't have any aircraft on the night scenario. So <laughs> I, I, I guess they mentioned in the rules for DYO, DYO purposes. Okay, so so far we determined that the target is within non-hip hexes. I'm not going to read them all. You can read them on your own. I know that there's a plus one for uh, being within four hexes of a non-hip vehicle. Uh, minus one target is a vehicler. It has to be the target. And uh, minus two for the target uh, not entirely concealed. So total of negative three negative modifiers and plus one for positive modifiers. So we need a 10 or less. Task check. Wouldn't you know it, man? Wouldn't you know it? So, uh, 11. Now, I was calling uh, Stukas, Stukats. And the reason why um, I was calling Stukas, uh, adopt, the adopted flying stupids or Stukats, the, 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 the nickname is because uh, the first time I attempted to use Stuka or, or uh, German air power, this is why I'm using the, 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 the Russian, is because I failed so miserably, and this was at the COI level, cross of iron level. I failed so miserably that task trick, it ended up being that um, that um, the aircraft attacked my own troops. Attacker's choice. Now, 11 means something here. Failing your, it could be a mistaken attack. Let's see. So if we look at 7.31, 7.31 states in Chapter E, an original task struck the RF-12 results in recall. At the end of, oh yeah, and this is, has to be modified by negative 2. So it's actually, uh, I believe uh, what I rolled was a, a 9. But still, uh, I did not cite it. In plain open view, I did not cite it. Hmm. A final uh, citing uh, TCDR of 12 or more results in a mistaken attack. The attack may then immediately move to an aircraft, but only on board, but not exit it from play by moving it off board and attack without a new sighting task truck. The defender's non hidden on board ground units that is closest in hexes on the aircraft initial target. So. In this case, uh, you, the aircraft, are the defender, and you're attacking during uh, either the movement phase or defensive fire phase with your aircraft, the attacker. Yeah. So, look up mistaken attack in more detail. Holy cow. Now let's suppose I passed my ta uh, same task track. At this juncture, I can attack the first hex, but not before receiving uh, AA fire. Now the defender, or the attacker rather, can um, fire any light AA weapon that is designated with in AA mode. The exclusion to that are vehicular anti-aircraft guns because that's what they were made for, to protect vehicles against um, anti-aircraft. So here is an example of heavy AA and light AA and the difference between one gun and the other is this has an infantry fire table equivalent. This one does not. So heavy AA can only fire during prep fire and defensive fire. Uh, light AA, provided they're designated with an AA counter, let's see if I can readily get an AA counter. They can fire it, uh, vehicle, so here is the uh, source, unit, gun, AA. Um, notice that it, if you switch between modes, the rate of fire decreases by one upon place slash removal. Okay. So, and I suppose the same thing goes for, for here. 
Okay. And I believe this is uh, this around, this uh, reduction is cumulative with every other reason to re to reduce it. Okay. So at this point, the vehicle can attack first using his AA machine gun over there. And the way you attack is on the star vehicle um, on the star vehicles uh, sign of your of your uh, chart. However. If you take a look at this number here, there's a 2. So that is your uh, DRM for the attack on the infantry target type. This fellow is going to attack. And for the purposes of this example, I'm only going to do one attack against the aircraft and proceed to show you what a strafing run looks like. Okay? So let's roll it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ordinarily, I needed a four. If I get um, if I get less than the number um, that I um, that I needed, a one, two, or three, the aircraft is eliminated. If I had gotten a four, then the aircraft would have been um, damaged. If I had gotten a five. Uh, that that um, uh, that uh, aircraft would have had to evade, break off its attack, but not before incurring more AA fire. So in this case, this guy missed, and I said for the purposes of this example, I'm not going to fire any more AA guns at him, because now he can use an eight. I'm su I'm supposing um, if this unit was not moving in the open. Um, an 8 even attack. So we roll, we roll the 6 on the 8, and for the crew exposed unit, we would have rolled an 8. So a normal for the uh, crew, and and for and for the infantry, it's a 2 check. So the crew in the half truck needs an eight or less. They make it and a two check for the infantry, a six and a five. And the infantry breaks. And we're not going to do a sand check. That was an 8 attack, so we leave 4 residuals as normal in that hex. Now at this juncture, I have to declare whether it's going to be a point attack or, um, or a strafing run at the second hex that I, I come about. Okay? And the difference, the major difference between one and the other is if you declare a point attack, uh, you can... Uh, you can use the 0 to 6 table for uh, the bomb as opposed to the 7 to 12, which is somewhat of an important difference. Now let's take a look and see what is the difference. So if I'm firing vehicular target type using the bomb or area target type, it does make a difference as well, because one would be, the area target type would be on the... Um, on the infantry fire table. So there is no point in, in making really a, a, a um, that distinction because 0 to 6, if you're targeting the vehicle, it's a 10 to hit. You have a 120 HE, which would be a 12 attack. Well, even more, because you have to use two different modifiers against the vehicle. So, again, let's say I'm now declaring another strafing run, okay, and if another vehicle rolls, boom, suppose they missed, there you go, and uh, my second attack will be against this hex, and using the A table on the IFT, am I double clicking here? Looks like it, which is a complete miss, but I still lay residuals, because 
presumably I'm doing this during the German movement phase. Um, so these guys, I believe, are bounding fire. Okay. Then I move again, do a, another uh, two up to attack. Nothing but I got rate. Now it would be interesting to note if uh, rate applies in this case. Um, and then what, um, and then they would fire in here and lay down another four residuals. And that process would continue until I reached the last X that I fired. If it was a point attack at this juncture, I would roll on the 0 to 6 table to hit, got a hit, and um, with a 120 HE attack, I would need a 12 or less. And the other two modifiers that you apply is the rear target facing, well, it's an open top, and case. Let's take a look at that. Here it is in the rule book, Echo 7.421. Two kill cases A and B, Charlie 7.21 dash 0.22 for aerial advantage and rear target facing, applying both instances. Any additional armored factor uh, AFE in the same location is unaffected except by the provisions of overstacking. Regardless of the type of hit achieved versus an AFV, excluding dud, all unarmored targets in the same hex uh, are also attacked if hit. Uh, each unit is stacked with an IFT to kill DR. And the other difference with respect to Stukas is they start their attack at point blank and then instead of having to proceed uh, an additional, uh, well, they roll from four hexes away, they start here and then go ahead and take, uh, continue th through their the first attack tax for three hexes as opposed to four. Okay, MG fire. What do we have to say against MG fire? Uh, attack each level, it attacks each level of the building with the same DR. Only when attacking AFEs do separate two hit DRs on 0 to 6 in, and 7 to 12 range um, and use aerial two hit DR in C6. Uh, the two, two kill table 39F, 42F, and 44F, Stukas always use 39F. Aerial advantage again and rear facing apply. Uh, critical hits do not apply. You cannot get a critical hit with an MG. I think Igor said that. Let's take a look at 7.12. Charlie 7.12. Iggy Krikta. Six seven seven one two. Yeah. Six, oh, seven point one two. All right, here we go. Aerial AF. The aerial AF is listed on the C11 AF table and is used instead of the normal AF um, of an AFE. Is hit by an aerial attack, an optimal position DC, and its underbelly. Such an attack uses aerial AF uh, listed beneath the AFE's worst AF either hull or turret, regardless of location of the hit, even if attacked through the vehicle front uh, target facing. Let's see if we can find that ch uh, AF chart on the um, red charts.
So on with MG attacks versus a armored vehicle, uh, according to uh, Echo 7.41 MG armament, uh, an aircraft's MG, MG basic two kill number is listed under either 39F, 42F, 44F, depending on the scenario you're on the AP two kill number C, Charlie 7.31, Excluding both Stuka types, always use the 39F to kill. Now I kind of seem to get that. Here it is 39, Stuka MG 12.7, actually Stuka MC there. All right, and 42, 44. Huh. And there, ah, oh, there it is. There's their color code Fighter MG armament by year. What an enlightening. A moment here, huh? The Greek just got a Eureka moment here. MG uh, fighter, MG armament by year. Holy cow! Thirty-nine is a four to kill. Forty-two is a five, and forty-four uh, is a six. And to that, you uh, uh, you can apply quite a few uh, modifiers: uh, aerial advantage. Rear target facing. I think there's also an additional modifier if it's open top. Hmm. I did say it was a, you know, a Q and A session. I didn't say there was going to be more answers than questions. It looks like there might be more questions than answers, but we're getting our feet wet. Okay. Let's go down the list here. MG fire. Oh. We we found out where the MG fire is listed on table as Charlie 7.31 bombs. Uh, so if you're doing a, a strafing run, uh, you score a hit on this 0 uh, to 7 table. And 0 to 6, if you're using a, um, a uh, point attack after a successful, successful task check, we kind of did a, a quick one. A quick example, always use the black to hit numbers. If using MGN bombs, pre-designate the attack. Flip to indicate the bomb is used. Uh, and it can only be used once. I said that at the beginning of the video. So once this guy uses his uh, bomb, you kind of flip it over. And there's no more bomb, just an MG. And he continues doing strafing attacks. Until he's recalled. Or he is damaged. Or uh, actually not damaged, eliminated or subsequently said uh, has to go bye-bye. In certain cases, aircraft have to exit um, using using um, SSR. Now, uh, versus an armored fighting vehicle attack, um, so you can designate a Doesn't mean attack using the area target type, but you have to roll um, half of the basic two kill number, and the hit is resolved on the aerial AF of the AV with basic HE two kill of the bomb load. And that too, you end up, I believe, having it. Um, if you roll less than, uh, if you roll more than half of the of the uh, um, basic uh, to hit number, it's considered a a near miss, and less than or equal to half of the two kill number. What am I talking about? It's right here. Unless occurring occurring on the area target type, that's Echo seven point four two one. A bomb hit versus an AFE can be two types. The final to hit DR is less than or equal to half the basic to kill number. Less than or equal to five unless a fighter bomber uh, from an aerial range of eight hexes. The result is a direct hit. And if you roll more than half of the two, two hit number, um, then you have a indirect hit. Okay, if a final to hit DR yields a hit but it's not less than half the two kill number. The result is a near miss and is resolved versus aerial 
AF, but with only half of the bomb's basic to kill number and half firepower for any spe specific collateral attack. In cases, uh, two kill cases A and B for aerial advantage and rear target facing apply in both cases. Um, now we did a basic example of, of uh, light AA fire using the AMG of the half track. The other thing that you need to know, and I'm not going to cover, um, I'm not going to cover uh, um, aerial observation, and nor does that little um, player aid that um, I have here, excluding DYO and E 7.6 aerial observation. The other thing you need to know is uh, 7.52, heavy AA, and this is an example of a heavy AA, does not have an equivalent, excuse me, uh, IFE, and they may only fire during prep fire and defensive fire phase, not movement phase. Heavy AA may attack any area, aerial aircraft on the board, including an observation plane, I said I wasn't going to cover it, but I... all right. Uh, a two hit damages it. Wait a second. An original two to hit DR eliminates the aircraft. An original three to hit DR damages it. An original four DR prevents it from attacking during that player turn. Normal gun malfunction rate of fire rules apply. If more than one aircraft is are on board including friendly air, uh, aircraft, the target is determined by random selection. Hmm. A minus one DRM for friendly aircraft applies for the random selection. DR unless, little d, little r, unless those aircraft are in aerial melee. Oh. Each time a heavy AA gun fires on an aircraft, the white DR indicates how many hex spines they Covered arc of the gun must change in a clockwise direction, even if that covered arc change results in a gun facing a blind hex. Wow. 33 minutes, quick overview, Q&A with respect to air support, guys. Hey, we're no longer this guy. You all know about the uh, reason why I call Stuka Stukats. And... Uh, at least we got our feet wet. I wouldn't say this is an exhaustive uh, Q&A slash tutorial, but it, it's at least um, a quick way to get yourself familiarized with aerial support, air support, and um, play a couple of scenarios, do a couple of rule book dives like I did just now and before. This is my second take on it, or maybe my third take on it. And I still don't have it completely right. Um, just the same, uh, just like you've done in some people have done in the other video, uh, your comments are greatly appreciated. Guys, thank you so much, and, and ladies, thank you so much for liking and subscribing. I greatly appreciate it. And um, stay tuned. There's a lot more fun to come in this channel. And hopefully what I do is I pre-record my... my um, my videos during the week on some spare time, not that I have a lot, and publish them, announce them as as premieres, or uh, schedule them so you guys can see when they arrive. I try to get these uh, these videos done by uh, Saturday morning, just in time for Saturday morning cartoons like we were young. But hey, if things happen, I'll let you know. Take care. So long. Roll low, be happy, be nice, be lucky. Take care.